With the first season of Shining Girls coming to an end recently, many fans have been left wondering what the last episode of the show really meant. The show, which is based on a thriller novel from 2013 written by Lauren Bukes, has been a huge hit thus far. Today, we'll answer some of the viewers' biggest questions following Shining Girls' explosive season finale. First up, what is the house and what exactly does it want? The house isn't just a fancy time travel machine. It's a malicious entity in the show that's existed for around a couple of hundred years. It mainly goes after those who decide to use its power to cause pain over time, and then feeds off the resulting anguish caused both from the victim's torment and their eventual death. The house is often seen mainly bringing down smart and hardworking women down at the peak of their personal and professional lives, essentially taking away their shine. These desires of the cunning building made Harper a perfect vessel. We see that Harper already felt like the world owed him, so getting him to harm and kill women who were way out of his league wasn't too hard of a goal to achieve. The house has the ability to hide in plain sight by being invisible or blending into its surroundings until it finds someone it deems to be a suitable vessel. It also corrupts the soul of whoever happens to be the current owner of it. It's more a case of the house owning and having power over them. Many fans wonder if all this means the house is inherently malevolent or not, so let's take a look at some of the evidence that says it definitely is. So, how do we know that the house is evil? For starters, the first owner that we saw on the show had a pretty terrible experience with the structure, and he eventually hung himself. The next owner looked like he'd been through hell when Leo and Harper found him. He also likely had an affair with Britta, which eventually caused her to go down a cursed path that resulted in her being introduced to Harper. The house also called out to the owner instead of his co-workers, and after discovering it, the man had no issues with removing a dead body and claiming it for himself. Lastly, it specifically called out to Harper, who we know is an evil man. Through the vibrations, it released. On the other hand, it wouldn't call out to Leo or even bother to work for him. Although we saw that Leo was certainly a flawed individual, he was nowhere near as evil as Harper. So why did the house reject him, but specifically chose Harper, if anyone could take over it? Next, does the house turn all of its owners into serial killers? Not always, but definitely puts them through a ton of unpleasant situations. The second owner looked beat down when Harper and Leo found him, and like we previously mentioned, we discovered that the previous owner had hung himself. It's highly likely that the reality shifts caused by previous owners brought on collateral damage and pain to others. It's also worth keeping in mind that when the old man found a dead body, his first instinct was to get rid of it and claim the house for himself. And then there's Kirby, who we know it specifically chose after she heard the vibration while standing close by it. When Kirby was first introduced, she was incredibly kind-hearted towards everyone, even after the attack that caused her world to come crashing down. But after becoming the house's owner, she found great joy in hurting Harper before, causing him to lead a life of empty confusion. Now, in our opinion, it's a pretty justified act when you remember what Harper did to her. What isn't okay is her decision to try and reconnect with Dan, knowing it'll result in him being tied to the house, too. And now, does the house still affect people it didn't choose? Well, Leo can tell you more about how that goes. Although the house didn't work for him, he stayed there long enough so that it tied itself to Leo's soul. And despite not being able to use the entity's powers, his mental state and overall health began to severely severely deteriorate after he was away from the structure for an extended period of time. This also shows why Kirby's aim of trying to reconnect with Dan points to her soul beginning to be corrupted by the house. So why did Harper put objects that belonged to one of his victims inside of another? Well, one answer could be that it showed what could happen and how Harper could be caught. But in reality, the writers of the show didn't do a very good job explaining this. In the original Lauren Bukes novel, Harper is directed by the house to kill specific women who shine with success. When he sees these women in person, he can literally see them shining in a radiating glow. Harper receives his tasks through objects on one of the house's walls with each woman's name under it. From there, his practice of leaving an item inside his victims is a combination of having murderous compulsions and also because the house had directed him to do so. Now, as far as the TV series is concerned, this was likely the house's way of ensuring that he'd had a physical connection between all the victims it told Harper to kill. He may have been the house's puppet, but the totem on the wall would provide the structure with a physical connection afterward. Next, how do time reality shifts work? These shifts in reality essentially revolve around Kirby because of her surviving Harper's attack and becoming unstuck in time. Harper also starts to experience these shifts later when he and Kirby are fighting at the laundromat in episode 4. Kirby's reality changes any time Harper feels a strong emotion in relation to the house, but because he's a sociopath, they don't occur that often. The strongest of these feelings he gets is the 
a rush after he's killed someone. When Harper had killed Jenny, Kirby's reality shifted so that she was married to Marcus. The big shifts are typically based on choices she could have made or will potentially end up making in the future. Contrary to popular belief, this isn't necessarily an example of the butterfly effect. For instance, when we go back to the previous example, Jenny's murder took place long after Kirby and Marcus would have gotten together. So why did Kirby look so sad in the final shot? There are a few potential reasons for Kirby's defeated state at the end of episode 8. For starters, she's gone from being a victim of reality shifting to being able to control it, which causes her to feel more isolated than ever. This was emphasized during her meeting at the bar with Dan. Despite a small part of him recognizing Kirby, he will never know her for their time that was erased by Harper. Aside from the connection they had, Dan was the only person besides Jenny who knew and understood what Kirby had gone through. Now she's just a small blip in the deepest part of his alcohol-filled subconscious. Additionally, Kirby knows at this stage that she can't leave the structure for a certain period of time. She's practically trapped and has to live out her days inside this evil structure that was the main reason for what ruined her previously enjoyable life to begin with. Next, in other related news, why there may not be a season 2 of Shining Girls. The first season of Shining Girls premiered on Apple TV Plus and pretty much followed the original novel to a T. Seeing how the TV series ended, it's highly unlikely that another season will be coming because the series and novels end in the same and definitive way. Apple TV Plus and any producers of the show haven't come out and made any affirmative statements, however. And now, Jamie Bell and his character for the show. Jamie Bell, who plays the murderous Harper in Shining Girls, gave an interview in which he talked more about the character he played. Bell made many remarks about his role, including saying that even with the help of behavioral sciences, it would still be impossible to help and understand someone like Harper. Bell also said that he found his character to just be overall a very intriguing one, saying, my fascination with people like this, and I'm sure a lot of people share, is what makes people do this. Why are people compelled to do these horrific things? Finally, Elizabeth Moss makes a return for The Handmaid's Tale Season 5. Elizabeth Moss, who played Kirby in The Shining Girls, has been seen in the official photos released for Handmaid's Tale upcoming season. Hulu recently revealed that the series would be returning, with the new season coming out on September 14th of this year. In the series, Moss plays June, or Alfred, who is the main protagonist in the show. Fans have loved her performance so far and are definitely excited to see a return for the fifth season. That's a wrap for this video. What did you guys think of Shining Girls ending? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.